Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at the top seven problems with beginners using ladder logic. Here are the top seven problems and concepts beginners struggle with using ladder logic or ladder diagram. Ladder logic is a programming language used in PLCs and is based on the graphical representation of electrical relay logic circuits. Many programmers struggle with ladder logic because it requires a different mindset than traditional programming languages like C++, Python, or Java. We will look at the seven common issues beginners face due to a lack of understanding of ladder logic. Stick around until the end to see the bonus problem that is not well understood. Let's get started. Detailed information contained in this video can be found at accautomation.ca. A link has been put in the description below. If you have not watched the other videos yet, there will be links in the description below that will start you at video 1. There will be links to the rest of the videos in the series as well. Number 1. Thinking procedurally instead of parallel. In ladder logic, the ladder rungs are executed in parallel, meaning all the rungs are evaluated simultaneously in each scan cycle of the PLC. Beginners accustomed to sequential programming may find it challenging to break away from this procedural mindset and design their logic in parallel. Ladder logic is solved from left to right, top to bottom. The output from the previous rung is available for the next rung to use. Number 2. Misinterpreting contacts and coils in ladder logic. Contacts in ladder logic represent the status of input signals, while coils represent the status of output signals. Beginners may confuse these elements leading to incorrect ladder logic design and output behavior. Ladder diagrams are derived from electrical drawings. Understanding the difference between normally open and O and normally closed and C contacts is essential for writing accurate PLC programs. In ladder logic, always refer to the input and determine its state. Number three, difficulty or problems with timers and counters. Timers and counters are fundamental components of PLC programming. Beginners might struggle to grasp the concept of timers, delay on or off, and counters up or down. Incorrectly, configuring timers and counters can result in unexpected behavior in the system. When looking at timers and counters, always refer to timing diagrams. This will show you the essential operation of these instructions. Number four, overlooking scan times considerations. PLCs execute their programs in scan cycles, where the entire program is scanned repeatedly or cyclically. Beginners may not fully understand the implications of the cyclic nature leading to logic conflicts, race conditions, or undesired outputs. There are four essential parts of the PLC scan cycle. Read inputs, execute logic, or your program, diagnostics and communication, and update outputs. Since outputs are generally set only once per scan, the last ladder logic scan will be the one that sets an output if the logic is duplicated. Number five, lack of knowledge about memory types. PLCs have different memory types, such as input, output, and internal memory for storing variables and data. Beginners might not be aware of these memory types and their proper usage, leading to data corruption or unintended results. An example of this would be a retentive memory. If power is moved from the PLC and it comes back on, do we need to remember the condition before the power is removed? All memory is just bits in the PLC. PLC memory is bits just like a computer. They can be set for one or zero. Putting these bits together will allow for a word. The interpretation of these words will determine on the value. BCD, hex, float, etc. PLCs can convert from one to another. Number six, not leveraging advanced instructions. Ladder logic supports advanced instructions such as math operations, data manipulation, and comparison functions. Every PLC manufacturer will have the basics and different dedicated instructions within their controllers. Beginners may not explore or fully utilize these powerful instructions, resulting in less efficient and more complex programs. An example is the drum instruction on the Automation Direct PLC offerings. What other advanced instructions do you use? Shift registers, rotator masking, 
let me know in the comments below. Number 7. Difficulty in Troubleshooting Due to the graphical nature of ladder logic, beginners might find it challenging to debug the programs effectively. Identifying and resolving ladder logic errors or programming mistakes can be more demanding compared to the textual programming languages due to the scan. PLCs may have a built-in troubleshooting within their dedicated programming software to assist you. Bonus, developing a PLC program. A common beginner question is how to start programming the PLC. Developing a programmable logic controller or PLC program can be broken down into five steps. These programming steps are as follows. Step one, define the task. Step two, define the inputs and outputs. Step three, develop a logical sequence of operation. This will use timing charts, graphs, etc. Step four, develop the PLC program. And step five, test the program. Then after your test, you may go back and then revisit any of those previous steps until the program is complete. These five steps to PLC program development will help you understand, program, and troubleshoot your automated machine. The actual PLC programming is the second last step. Beginners make the mistake of not fully understanding the logic of the system to be accomplished. This then makes the actual programming of the system longer with the constant rewrites and updates based on new knowledge. A programmer should know everything about the system before programming. To overcome these challenges of ladder logic or ladder diagrams, beginners should thoroughly understand the basic concepts of ladder logic. They can practice designing small programs, testing them in a simulated environment, and observing the PLC's behavior. Always refer to the PLC manufacturer's documentation on the hardware and software you use. These top items of knowledge will be beneficial in improving ladder logic efficiency. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. If you want more information about us or you want our free ebooks on numbering systems or robust data logging, please click on the link in the description below to get it. A new video is put every Monday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button so you get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click the bell beside your subscription to actually receive those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Stay safe.